Hey everybody, Adam with Fanic here. Uh, today we're going to cover another super fun topic. This is the topic of incremental moves. Um, most of you, all of you, should be very well familiar by now with absolute moves. Um, most of the time we don't even classify them as such because it's just so normal to use an absolute move. Uh, absolute meaning I've gone to a position register and I've taught a position and then I move there. Today we're going to talk about incremental moves. Moves that build upon the previous position that the robot was in. So it's all relative motion. So let's dive into this. And, uh, and, 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 and while we're diving in, just think of where you could use this in a common application. So I've invented a super simple hypothetical situation to make my job easier while teaching you. And um, I want this robot, my R2000, with a simple pointer tool and a properly set TCP, I want it to hypothetically lay a silicon bead uh, in a serpentining manner across this shelf because maybe I need to pick and place a, a backing to it and stick something onto it when I'm done. So, so I need an adhesive or a silicone or something, and I want to serpentine this thing. Well, this is just a 4x4 four four so really, it wouldn't be the end of the world to teach a bunch of points and call it a day. But what if this was 10 by 10 and there were hundreds of points and paths to go? Um, I'm going to show you a trick on making your life a lot easier. So let's create a new program over here. Let's uh, create a program and call it squares because I'm super original. I could have called it circles and thrown you all off. The first thing we're going to do is uh, set up the four favorite lines of code, which is uh, my user frame is going to be world. I have not taught a frame of the table. Shame on me. Uh, the user tool will be tool one, which I have defined. I have defined a payload previously, so that's good. And I'll also slow this robot down ever so slightly so that we can see where it's running. Um, Maybe the first thing I want to do is uh, throw in a little line of code that the robot starts at a home position. Okay, so now let's get into the, into the fun stuff, right? Let me throw a few lines of code in here. A traditional way of attacking this would be absolute positions in which I would bring the robot to a corner like this, come over here, teach a point, and I would begin repeating this process of move, teach, move, teach. I would do this over and over and over and over until I have uh, a fully working program of a full serpentine, right? And I can teach all these points and, and blah, 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 blah. Um, show you what this one would look like. Start at home comes down and starts dispensing. Okay, so you could do that. Or you could delete these lines of code. Don't need those anymore. I'm going to keep the origin point. I'm going to, I'm going to name it my start position, which is, uh, as you see here from the, from the tool, this is my start position. And I'm going to have every other point in this program be relative to the start point. And I, and I want to make that note important. That'll mean more at the end of this video. So the other thing I need to do is if I'm starting here and I'm essentially using offsets, but not using offsets, these are incremental moves, uh, I need to know how far to go. So let me pull out this measuring tool real quick. Hit the, hit the uh, RoboGuide measuring tool. And let's say I want to measure from somewhere around here to somewhere around here. Did you all know we had a measuring tool? If you didn't know, you know now. All right, so the width of this board is about 946.5. I'll tell you what, I'm going to bring up this just so I can save it. This is my notepad. Perfect, I'm just gonna set that aside. I also need to know my offset width. Um, where, uh, how far the pitch is this way. So let's 
do another measurement and take it to right around here. I'm just ballparking, by the way. Let's bring up another little pad here. Uh, we're going to round and call that 235. All right, I'm just setting these off screen so that I have my numbers available. Okay, so let's see how those numbers are going to, in fact, here, I want you to see what I see. Let's see how these numbers are going to help my incremental moves. I'm going to insert another line, just like that, and I'm gonna go over here into the motion modifier area, and I'm gonna say choice, and I'm gonna change it to be an incremental move. When I do that, some wild stuff starts happening. We get a highlighted yellow and red position for P2, Get a little love note down here that says position P2 has been uninitialized. I've blown that position out. If I take this guy and I look at the data, there's nothing in there. So what I want to do is I want to tell the robot, I got to think of my robot gang sign here. Uh, I need to move negative Y. Hopefully that's obvious and intuitive for you guys. I need to move negative Y by this amount. So let's take that and say I want to go nothing in the X, negative 946.5 in the Y, and nothing in all of these other ones. Okay. That's an incremental move. What that is telling the robot is wherever you finished here, I want you to go negative 946 from there. And we're going to start stitching this together. And you'll see where this becomes super helpful in just a moment. Let's make another incremental move. And I'm going to say, once I get to P2, I want to move incremental in my negative X by this amount. So let's do that. I want to go negative 235 in my X and nothing in anybody else. That works. I want another one. And you'll see where this starts paying off in spades soon. Stick with me, guys. Incremental. I want to go now positive in my Y to start coming back to where I came from. I would argue that typing this in is already easier than jogging a robot and teaching. But the real punchline is coming soon. And then lastly, I want to do one more move in the negative X. Because once I have defined this pattern of over, down, over, down, I can just start repeating and over, down, over, down, over, down. I, I could do that a thousand times if, I, if, if that's what the, the project called for. So this last one, um, we went over, down, over. This is one more down, which is the negative 235 and X. Perfect. Now that I have that, and, and you know what? You could you could be cool about this too. You could say this is negative y, uh, this one is negative x. You know, you can name these things and say this one is positive y, uh, and then this one is negative x again. Um, if you really wanted to be fun, this value could have also been p3. You don't have to teach it different, but let's just keep rolling with what I've got. When I see this, I start seeing a pattern over, down, over, down. I see a pattern. What is good for patterns? If you're thinking like I'm thinking, anytime I see a pattern, I start thinking about for loops. Um, so I'm going to pick a register that I know I haven't used. I think I haven't used 20. I want to do this four times. I think four times. One two, three, maybe three times. We'll see what the robot does. I think three times, All right? We want to go over, down, over, down. That's one. Over, down, over, down. That's two. And then maybe go to the end. I guess I only need to repeat this twice. You get the idea. Let's uh, do a end four. So now we're going to start looping this thing. Again, I have a four by four, so I'm only looping this twice. Uh, if I had um, you know, a bigger box or more divisions, it could be more, but hey, I've already saved four lines of code. Let's see what this does. Let's go ahead and give this thing a run. 
and uh, see if, if what we've done makes any sense. Start at our home position, go to the start, increment, 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 increment. So you can see how every single point is just an incremental addition to where we left off previously. And if I wanted, I could actually end my program after my for loop. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, make sure we do this whole thing. After we finish there, I would just simply add uh, one more increment and say I want to increment. You all remember what that number was? 946.5, something like that. I think that's what it was, except at the very last move, it'll be negative one at negative 946.5. Let's, uh, let's debug our code again. Let's run it. Start at home, go to position, boom, 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 boom. There it is. I now have a program that serpentines this entire system, and I have one taut point. Now, why is this cool? Well, what happens if I were to take this, this uh, little shelving rack I have here and go like that? Uh-oh, right? Now, all my glue is going uh, down the cracks and, and making a mess. And uh, uh, my boss wants to fire me. And, you know, I'm going to have to sell that new Porsche. No. All you have to do is go back to that origin. Go to that origin position. Go to your start position and do a shift touch up. Now that that new origin position is taught, Every other point in this entire looping program is just relative to that. So let's run. Start at home, come back down. Hey, I get to keep my Porsche. So that is one big benefit of incremental moves is you can have an entire system, as, as many points as you want, that are all based off of one origin point. Uh, I've actually seen people do this with pick and place. Where, where they're picking and then going up, over, down, up, over, down, and doing a full pick in place where just the pick position is taught and everything else is increment from there. Move somewhere, go and increment. Move somewhere, go and increment. Um, you know, you should already be thinking about where this could be useful, but where it could bite you as well, right? Let's say that uh, this pattern wasn't perfectly symmetrical well, then it wouldn't be as easy to loop, you know, because at some point my increment would have to be a different size. All right, so now well, then you're getting into more points. Or what if I just wanted to say, you know what, I, I just want to touch up one spot, just that one corner I need to modify. Ain't going to happen because it's all built in and nested and relative to everything else. So for, for some applications, this is a slam dunk. It's a no-brainer. It's easy. It's simple. And in some places, you know, maybe the juice ain't worth the squeeze. I would, I would love to know uh, your ideas and, and your thoughts in the comments of, of will you use it, won't you, when would you, when wouldn't you. Uh, let me know. But um, in any event, guys, I hope this is another tool for your tool bag. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. And as always, have fun coding.